Hi, welcome to XLab video tutorials. And this video will demonstrate the use of the boundary value solver BV solve for the following example. It's a second order nonlinear system shown here in the domain x0 to 1 and with boundary conditions u equals 0 at both ends. Let's begin by accessing the help page for BV solve. BV solve is designed to solve a multi-point boundary value first order differential algebraic system listed in this order where the differential equations are first and the any algebraic equations are listed last. It takes four required parameters system which is a reference to the right hand side formulas, vars which is a, a reference to the system variables, pc points which is a list of the boundary condition points and bc functions which is the corresponding list of boundary condition formulas. Finally you have to specify the domain for the problem and you can also customize the output. It also takes additional optional parameters m which is the number of alge algebraic constraints if they are present in the system the default is zero. Tolerances where we can either specify uh, constant tolerance for the entire system or a vector of tolerances relative tolerances for each variable. Control, which control the settings for the solver algorithm. Like all solvers in Excel Lab, it's a set of key value pairs. Uh, BV Solve uses uh, an advanced collocation algorithm based on the Cold EE solver published uh, by Prof Professor Asher and Spiteri. This is a collocation method with adaptive mesh refinement. The help page describe all the available control settings for this solver uh, we, with the proper default values but we have full control over these settings including the numerical calculation of the Jacobian. We can also if desired pass analytical definitions for the system Jacobian as well as the bonding condition formulas although generally this is unnecessary. Let's move to the example where most of this will become clear. Uh, this is the second order nonlinear system that we would like to solve. Uh, it's the first step that we have to do is represent the system as a set of first order equations. And the procedure to do this conversion is really straightforward. We introduce a uh, variable z, uh, define u prime as z, so du dx is equal z. Then we redefine u double prime as dz over dx. And in the equation, we substitute for u prime the new variable z. Note that this conversion does not affect the boundary conditions which are defined in terms of u. Uh, having now this first order system, it's easy for us to uh, work with BV solve. The first thing we do is define the right hand side formulas, which I've already done here. It's a good idea to add labels to each equation, although it's not required, but it helps us remember the order that we've defined these equations. So our first equation is very simple, and I'm using the variables x1 for the independent variable, uh, z1 and u1 for the differential variable. So our first equation is just simply equal z1, corresponding to the first equation here. And our second equation is simply uh, this formula on the right-hand side. Uh, notice that I've also uh, introduced the variable e1, for this epsilon and I've given it a value of 0 0.05. This is convenient because later on we can adjust this value without having to modify the formula. Next we need to define a boundary con the boundary points for the problem and we have two points here 0 and 1 so I've listed the points here in the vector d10 to d11 and in the, um, the corresponding vector e10 to e11 I've listed the corresponding boundary conditions which are simple here. We have uh, u equals 0 at both ends so the equation at 0 would be equal u1 and the same for x equal 1. To understand how we de define these formulas is simply we look at the original boundary condition, we replace our variable by the Excel variable which is u1 and we rewrite the equation with respect to 0. So here we have u1 equal 0 which is simply what we write here, just equal u1. Uh, for example, if we had here u at 0 equal 1, then our boundary condition formula would be u1 minus 1, and so forth. Uh, having defined the system, that's all there is really to it. Now we can uh, solve it with BV solve. 
Uh, to use VV solve, I have to allocate an array for it because it's an array formula. And here, since we have three variables for the system, x1, u1, and z1, we need at least three columns. So I'm going to allocate three columns as uh, an arbitrary number of rows, about 22 rows. In the formula bar, I'm going to enter my PV solve formula. My first argument is a reference to the system formulas. My second argument is the list of the system variables, and I have to put them uh, in the following order. The independent variable first, x1, then the differential variables in the order of defined my equations. So I've started with u1 and then z1. Note that I'm us using parentheses here. This is a standard Excel union oper operator which combines all these three references into one reference. My third argument is the list of boundary condition points. And my fourth argument is the list of corresponding boundary condition formulas. And my fifth argument is the definition for the domain of the problem, which is 0 to 1. Now I'm ready to execute it as an array formula by pressing Control shift enter And it computes a solution. Uh, fairly quickly as you have seen and populates the allocated array. Uh, one thing to describe here is uh, we are using the default output and uh, what the solver does it is it takes the allocated number of rows and divides it up in this domain 0 to 1 so we ended up uh, in an increment of 0 0.05. Uh, if we had allocated more rows Obviously, that increment will be different. You have full control over this output. If we go back to the help page um, for the argument number five solution, uh, we ha you have all these formats for how to specify the output. In the default case, as we have seen, it just simply divides the main over the allocated number of rows. You can also specify your desired division, uh, and you can also specify selected points where you want the output reported starting with the uh, in, uh, first point intermediate points and end point if you use any of the optional formats uh, you have to make sure that you have allocated sufficient number of rows uh, the first thing i would like to do here is plot the solution and this is easy to do using excel built-in graphs so i'm going to highlight my solution and insert a scattered graph with smooth curves and Excel automatically plots the solution for us. It's a good idea to change the scale for uh, U1 by inserting a secondary axis. And as you can see now we have a better view of the solution. Uh, let's move this down. Now I would like to actually uh, use one of the optional uh, control uh, settings for the algorithm for the solver and report the global error estimates for the solution. This gives us an idea about how well the uh, solver has converged. If we go back to the uh, help page again and look at some of the available control keys for the solver, we see that we have uh, a key called error estimate and if we set its value to true then it will report for us in the last row of the allocated array the global error estimates for the differential variables. So let's take advantage of it and use it. The control settings is argument number or parameter number 8 for the solver. So I'm going to skip over parameter number 6 and also going to skip over to the tolerances parameter number 7 by simply passing no argument. And in my 8th parameter I'm going to use a constant array specifying the key and the value true. Now if I recompute the solver with Control shift enter it regenerates the solution and as you see here in the last row of my allocated array it reports relative errors and for u1 this is the value and for z1 this is the value it's pretty good actually we are in order of 10 minus 6 so it's, uh, it's, it indicates good conversions for the solution 
Now one thing to note is that our increment has changed. This is because we have used one available row to report the errors. So the number of available rows for the rest of the solution has uh, uh, shrunk by one. Uh, to get the previous increment, all we have to do is increase the size of the array by one more row simply by highlighting it and increasing one more row and then recompute our solution again and then we are back to the uh, increment 0 0.05 and we still have the errors reported at the last line uh, there are more control parameters that we can demonstrate uh, they are uh, explained in the uh, written example uh, at uh, the web page which you can consult. This uh, really concludes the first part of this demonstration. The second part of this demonstration I will solve a, another stiff body condition uh, problem and demonstrate how you can respond to error messages and warnings from the solver. Thank you for watching and uh, please uh, make sure to watch part two as well to better understand the capabilities of BVSolve.